Hi, good afternoon. It's Little Lake. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that funny? I didn't have to until I hit the record button. And then I sneezed. <laughs> I'm here with James. And James... It's almost been a year that I've had you, James. Yes, I got him at the Rose Doll Show at the Pixie Mountain Creations um, booth. And Lori Duncan is the one who is his artist. And he was sculpted by Sandy Farber, Faber, 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 James. And I've just called him James. Anyway, it was a funny thing because I think it was the last day. And I was just kind of, I mean, I had been through that place. It, it felt like a hundred times because I went back and forth and looking at things. And you see something different every time. And um, he was there. He was just sitting there. And I just took one look and I was like, oh, I have to have him. Look at that face. Look at that hair. So I grabbed him up. Yeah, it was a done deal. Anyway, I'm so happy I did. Lots of people want him, and I've had to, to, to say he does not have a certificate of authenticity. Uh, Sandy Farber does not do them, and so he doesn't have one, and that seemed to be a, a bone of contention for one lady who wanted to buy him. But now I don't want to sell him. I'm happy I didn't. Uh-uh. He's one of a kind. Yeah, and I'm going to see Lori. I can't wait to go to her booth and look at who she has. Yeah, I was going to take James, and if I did take a baby, I probably would take him, but I'm not going to take a baby. Mm -mm. No, I just want to look at everybody else's babies, and I want to, um, yeah, I want to possibly buy a baby. I don't think I do because I'm very happy with who I have and what I have in my collection. So I, 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 but I don't know. You just never know. I might see that baby. You know, it's different when you see a baby in person, like at the Rose Doll Show, uh, than when you just see one on eBay or in somebody else's collection. So I'm, I'm anxious to, uh, to see some babies. Anyway, um, I have both these, these kiddos here today. Yeah, and I'm going to put... They've got outfits that kind of match. So I'm going to, let's see, I think I'll, who am I going to do? I think I'll, I think I'll put this one. This is so cute. It, these are both mayoral, mayoral outfits. And as you can see, they're very much alike. Uh, same colors and everything. So I thought that they would go good on these kids. Oh, and they got, look at the shorts, with the cute little, yeah, so let's put these on. It's nice summer, and you can play out. I spent the whole day yesterday out by the pool. Even Lala went in the pool, yeah, even Lala. She could swim to the steps. That's what I always told my kids when I was teaching them to swim. Swim to the steps, and that's what I told her, and she did. She did it very good. Yeah, she did. You didn't go in, though. No. You kids didn't go in. So let's put this on him. Okay, let me put this over your head. So I had a very nice weekend. It was a birthday weekend for me. So I got to see all my children, which was very, very nice. And I got some nice gifts. I really just wanted lotions and and cologne and things like that. Uh, so that's what I got. And, uh, woo, did I, do I smell good? <laughs> so that's, and some beautiful, beautiful flowers. Well, that was on Mother's Day. <clears throat> but the flowers really lasted. Look at this. This giraffe's got a little, little bird on his nose. You're so funny. You're so cute. Yes, you are. Oh, happy James. Happy day, James. Uh huh. He never fusses. He doesn't doesn't fuss like Stevie does. Stevie's got okay indigestion all the time. I guess I don't know. She's not a happy baby. This baby's very happy. He's always smiling. 
Do you have much of a neck that we can... Yeah, look how cute this is. Oh my goodness, look at how cute this is. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Should I tuck it in or leave it out? Huh? Oh, poop, 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 poop. Yeah, you little sweet pea. Hi. Hi, sweet pea, yeah. Uh-huh. I have to get my James fix every now and then, don't I? He's so precious. Anyway, um, somebody, let's see, there were quite a few different comments. I haven't really had a chance to answer them. I was talking, I guess, about putting babies on their stomach. And when my babies were little, that's what you did. Um, yeah, and so I had put, I guess I had put Stevie on her stomach because she was crying. And um, one of my, one of the comments that I received after I talked about that was that she, this, the, the person said that her, her I think it was her cousin or her niece or nephew had died from SIDS. And I assume it was because he was on his stomach I, I, or she, I, I don't know. But of course, today, it's very important that babies are put on their backs to sleep. It's, they have um, decided that and that's just like, there's a lot of things that are different now. And uh, if I had known that uh, when I was younger and my children, they would have been on their backs too. But that was not something that, that was promoted or thought was, was serious. So I'm very sorry to that person who, who said that a relative of hers had died from SIDS. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be flippant or anything like that. That's a very serious thing. And I hope that everybody puts their babies on their back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, what else? I'm trying to think. I got so many nice comments. Oh, and somebody wanted me, I guess I had mentioned in one of my videos that I was a foster mother. Okay, let's switch babies here while I talk about that. Okay, you can come back on, James. He goes, I don't want to leave. I want to smile and be, be cute. I'll put you right up here, and we're going to get Louie. Yeah, it's my Louie boy. Hi, Louie. Hi, Louie. Louie, Louie, my precious. Um, yeah, so I guess I had mentioned that. <clears throat> I still have a little residue from when I was sick. <clears throat> you can hear it in my voice, and I'm sorry. I feel like I've got a frog all the time in my throat, and I can't quite clear it. In fact, I'm going to get a drink right now. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. That may help a little bit. I don't know. It may not. Anyway, this is my beautiful James. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so funny how when I first started this hobby, uh, that's all I wanted was a James. I want, or not a James, my beautiful Louie. I just wanted a Saskia. I didn't care. I just wanted a Saskia. And um, I wasn't paying attention to artists or how or, or how they were made or how they were painted or anything. I wanted a Saskia, I wanted a Levi, and I wanted a twin A. Yeah. And now, ugh, no, I want babies that are different from that. Now, I don't, I'm not looking for babies that I see. I, I like a little bit of a different kind of look in a baby now. Let's put this on you, and you've got one with a pocket. So it's, it's, it's funny how you evolve and you grow in this uh, hobby. But then, of course, I have my, my Saskia, I have my Levi, and I'm very happy with them. So, you know, there you go. But I have thought in terms of selling my Levi, which is kind of crazy because I love that sculpt. But I don't know. I'm just, you know. You see Levi's everywhere. And uh, I don't, although I don't see Saskia's too much anymore. No, nobody's actually showing you guys so much like in the beginning. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 
Okay. So anyway, back to, I, I guess I had mentioned that I had been a foster mother. I, it was when my, my last baby was about two, and I was home. I didn't have to work, and I, I was home with him. And my other kids were in school. They were in the next one to him, let's see, was four, and then six, and then eight. And they were in school. Even the four-year-old was going to nursery school. So I just had the two-year-old at home. And I had a very good friend that had read about fostering, being a foster mother, and the fact that there were not very many foster, foster families in our neighborhood. Uh, and she wanted to do it. And so I thought, huh, that is kind of a fun thing, I guess. I don't know. So I looked into it. Well... All I had to do was look into it, and they jumped all over, <laughs> you know, the fact that, oh, you can do, you know, they were so happy uh, to come to my house and see uh, me, and, you know, I don't, I, I don't know, so I ended up, uh, and I didn't care what I got, what, what kind of race, what kind of baby, or anything. Um, and I, so I started working, it was called Children's Home Society in Miami. So after I went through the process, uh, which wasn't really a big deal, and someone had come out and talked to me, um, they called me right away, and I was told I needed to go to Jackson Hospital to pick a baby up. There was a baby waiting for me. I'm like, oh my gosh. Just to bring a car seat. I had to bring a car seat to put the baby in. Well, and they said just somebody would meet me there. So I was a nervous wreck. But I went and uh, uh, I drove to Jackson. And uh, the social worker met me there. And uh, there, and there's my two babies. You can see them. And their orange outfits. Yeah, you want to play with your trap? And I was scared to death. I had no idea what I was going to get. I carried the, the car seat in, and there, uh, oh no, I didn't carry a car seat in. In those days, uh, car seats were not, you didn't have to put a baby in a car seat, as I recall. Uh, we're talking about the 70s. The early 70s, and there was not, uh, you didn't have to do that. So, uh, you know, so I, I went up to where I was supposed to meet the social worker, and I met her, and she told me that the baby I was getting had just been born. It was a little boy, and he only weighed five pounds. And I'm like, five pounds? And she said, yes, and he is addicted to methadone. <sighs> yeah, and you're going to have to give him phenobarbital every two hours to help him uh, get through this. And I'm like, well, oh my gosh, I, I've never had anything. And so anyway, whatever. They gave me this baby, put this little tiny, tiny biracial baby. His mother was white, his father was black, in my arms. And, um, yeah. It was really something to uh, get this baby. And uh, his mother had named him David, so we called him David. His mother had lost uh, custody of him, of course, because he was, he was addicted. Uh, he, he was a drug baby, and so she couldn't, couldn't take him home. The judge had said all kinds of things for her that she had to do. She had to have a job. She had to have a place to live. She had to be off of, uh, you know, there was a lot of things before she could get him back. But she was trying to get him back. That was, she did not want him to be adopted. She was trying to get him back. So meanwhile, he was going to be with me. Well, I took this little, little, tiny, tiny baby home. And I had to move out into the living room and sleep on the sofa with him in a little cradle right next to me because his little cry was so tiny, you couldn't hear it. And of course, my husband had to get up and go to work. The kids had to go to school. So I had to be close to where that baby was. And he cried like, eh, 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 
it, it just was so sad. And I could only give him two ounces at a time. And it was very hard to get him to settle down to do it. He shook. He just shook. His legs shook. His arms shook. I mean, he, he was addicted. And, um, yeah. Anyway, needless to say, the next few days, the next month or two, were, was very difficult. But somehow I did it. And this little baby thrived. He just got fat and sassy and cute. And when he was about, oh, maybe almost three months old, uh, Children's Home Society said, well, you need to bring him down here because his mother wants to see him. His mother's name was Carl, and his mother wants to see him. So we, we've uh, uh, made uh, an arra arrangements for her to come here and see the baby for an hour. So uh, I was very upset about it because I just, this was my baby. I mean, I... There was no doubt this was my baby. I was I treated him like my own baby. The boys loved him and anyway, so I I got him all dressed up and took him down to Children's Home Society. I didn't get to meet the mother, but cuz they came and they got him, took him from me. And I had to wait in another room for an hour while she was with him. And then when I got him back, he smelled like cigarettes. He did not smell good anymore. He did not smell like my baby. He smelled like something else. And I couldn't wait to get him home and bathe him and wash his hair. I don't think she smoked while she visited with him. I don't know. But I think because she smoked, it transferred to, to him. Anyway, long story short, I had that baby for nine months. And the whole time, Carl was trying to get him back, but... She couldn't. Uh, it really scared me because for a while there, she got a boyfriend. And so she presented in front of the judge that uh, she had a, a person that was very loving and blah, blah, blah. And they, ha they were a family now. <clears throat> and they wanted David, but the judge wouldn't go for it. Uh, she was still, <clears throat> she didn't, she was not testing. She was testing positive for drugs. Uh, and she didn't have a permanent place to live. So... After nine months, uh, her parental rights were terminated. And I think she went along with it. I think by this time, she realized that she couldn't provide a home for this little baby. And uh, so I was very thankful. I wanted to adopt him, but in those days, foster parents couldn't. I mean, that was really frowned on. And they had a family for him already, and that's a whole other story. But anyway, uh, when he was... Uh, about 10 months old, 10 or 11 months old, <clears throat> I had to give him up to his adoptive family. That was extremely difficult. Um, I didn't know when I started being a foster parent that <clears throat> I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, that I was going to um, only foster babies. That's all I wanted for a short period of time until they either went back with their parents or they were adopted. I had no idea that I was going to keep this baby for 10 months. It just, me, called me mama. So it wasn't good. But he got a good family and things worked out. But it was a very hard, hard transition for both of us. And I would never do it again. I'm just going to say that much about that. So, and then I went on to be a foster mother to more children. In fact, I'll, I'll talk about some twins that I had for a while. Uh, for anyway, that's those. I mean, every every baby, every child I had was a story, and um, it's sad, but I enjoyed having them. Yeah, we did, we did. We took them everywhere, even on vacation with us. Uh huh. So okay, these two little peanuts are dressed. Oops, you can't you can't drop it because Lala will get it. <clears throat> yeah, she'll get it. She'll get it and she'll chew it up. All right, oops, something on your face. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a good uh, day after Memorial Day. We had hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, we just did the hot dogs. We stayed home. We had gone out the night before and had a real nice dinner. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to do real quick. Here, let me just move him up here. And I'm just playing around. I've been playing with my babies today. And so I... um. 
look, I, <laughs> I, I, I dressed him, and I'm playing with him a little bit. Yeah, you, you wish a funny hair. I would have liked a little more hair on your head, but you know what can you do? Yeah, you little sweet pea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Just wanted to show you him and his little, these little pants fit so cute. Okay, I just, uh, I'm going to go now. Hope you guys have a good, good this is Tuesday, good Tuesday. And uh, I'll see you soon, I hope. Bye.